Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Slovenia once again and we're going to have a look then at another Davor beer. So first and foremost, a massive shout out and thank you to Davor Shiritz, my Slovenian and OG beer review here on Rampant Lion Reviews. It's thanks to him that you guys have been able to enjoy a steady stream of Slovenian beer reviews here on Rampant Lion Reviews over the last few years. He always sends me some really, really nice beers. It's been great to see how the Slovenian craft beer scene has evolved and he always puts in a few little Belgian goodies as well. He's a massive fan of his Belgian beers, he's got a ridiculous cellar of stuff and I keep encouraging him to, to start up his own YouTube channel but he's always very resistant to it but if you saw the list of beers that he had you would understand my encouragement and uh, you'd be immediately jealous of what he has. So um, yeah, I do wish that Davor would start up his own channel but he's been a great supporter of the channel over the years and I sincerely hope that you guys watching from different parts of the world enjoy seeing these Slovenian reviews because it's really cool to support these little breweries and it's also very cool to have people like Davor supporting the channel as well. So Davor, massive thank you to you once again for making this review and all the other ones you've been involved in possible. But um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. These guys brew mainly Belgian style beers, which is probably why Davor likes them and they're supposed to be pretty nice actually. If Davor approves of them with his kind of background in Belgian beer, then they must be doing some pretty solid stuff. But hopefully this is another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So uh, yeah, we are going to go to a little village called Osp, which is near Koper in the southwest of Slovenia, and we're going to have a look at my first beer from Pivovarna Varu, or the Guardian Brewery as that would translate into English. But this particular beer is called Erna, it comes in at 8.4% ABV and they describe this one as a Belgian strong golden ale. So um, yeah, this I think could be quite interesting. So my very first time looking at a beer from these guys but hopefully not the last but uh, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then I'm really curious to see whether this is like a triple or whether it's more just like a very kind of strong blonde ale or exactly what we're going to get with it this kind of idea of the Belgian strong golden ale is a little bit sort of ambiguous if you like there's quite a lot of room for movement in terms of flavour profiles and things within this kind of uh, umbrella of styles if you like but uh, yeah let's get on with it and see how we go so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Pivovar Navarro this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I mentioned but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you and that is added, being added to quite regularly because of the, the Davor boxes that come every so often and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is massive massively, massively appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Pivovarna Varu. And I do apologise in advance for any bad Slovenian pronunciations, but I've been told they're not bad. I've been told they're not bad. So anyway, um, Pivovarna Varu. These guys are based in the small village of Osp, which is near Koper in the southwestern part of Slovenia. Incidentally, I've heard that that southwestern coast is very, very beautiful, Piran and uh, Koper, I've been told I need to go and visit. But these guys in Osp are located out to the east of Koper, actually almost directly south of Trieste in Italy. But uh, the brewery was founded by Matthias Ivanchitz back in 2018, and he was joined soon after by his friend Clemen Flago. So Matthias has a background in theoretical physics and works as a professor, while Clemen has a legal background and works as a lawyer, obviously. But the brewery is a part-time venture for them. Matthias is the head brewer, whereas Clemen takes care of the business side of the company. But uh, the name Varu, as I mentioned earlier, means guardian, and they chose the owl for their brewery symbol. And in the first year, they produced four different beers, which were known as the Four Guardians. And these are named after Matthias's four grandparents. But the number four is also intended to represent the four values that he holds dear, which are nature, family, culture, and knowledge. And as I said, these beers all tend to be Belgian styles. They have got a few other things, though, that they've produced in more recent times, if you look at their untapped page. But uh, at present, 
These guys are operating a 300 litre brew kit and in 2019 they produced around 7,000 litres but they were curtailed from expanding this further because of the COVID-19 pandemic but they say they do have plans to, uh, to kind of get things moving again and scale things up in the relatively near future. But as of August 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced seven different kinds of beer. They've got the four Guardians and then there's a few experimental ones have come out beyond that. I think there was a big Imperial Stout actually when I was looking at the, the untapped earlier which seemed as if that would be pretty nice. But um, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about uh, people of Navarro for the moment. A big thank you to Matias for replying to my email because I was really struggling to find information on these guys and he wrote back and gave me all the information to share with you guys. So uh, yeah, that is that was pretty awesome of him to do that. So big thank you, Matias. But uh, that is everything I can tell you about them. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with the latest goings on. That is probably the best way to do it because these guys are very small. And uh, you can also check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um yeah let's crack on then and see how we go with this one so i'll let you just have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up as you can see it's quite straightforward but i think pretty effective you can see that this beer is in a little belgian stubby bottle of course and then it's just a black bottle cap that's on this one so i really like how um how this goes together but um yeah it's uh, it is pretty awesome. So I like, I do like how this uh, this goes. There. It's, it's got that th you know when you get these little Belgian stubby balls, it just feels a little bit a bit more authentic and things. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to this one actually. But um, yeah, very very curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. So yeah, we need to be careful when we open this because sometimes these Belgian beers have a little habit. Of, uh, exploding so we'll just be careful with it but an 8.4 percent belgian strong gold nail this one the other thing i should point out is that the four guardian beers if you look at the website the artwork is pretty similar on each of them but there is a red a green and a blue one if you look there and they're all different styles of belgian beer but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting it seems to be okay yeah this one's behaving itself as I say, with Belgian style beers, you've just always got to be careful and just opening the lid slightly to get an idea tells you whether it's going to explode on you or not. And I've had one or two do that recently. Um, but yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really looking forward to this. Incidentally, I don't know how much this beer cost. I could have messaged Davor actually beforehand and asked him roughly how much it costs. But um, yeah, um, I send Davor, uh, you know, I just transfer wise Davor the money for the the postage and the beers when it comes around and he puts in a few goodies of course as well but um yeah i don't know what this beer would actually cost so unfortunately i can't share that one with you probably about i'd probably guess maybe about three euros or something like that if it's by you know judging by my experience of the prices in slovenia before so maybe yeah three four euros something like that but uh, yeah i do apologize if that's underestimating the the beer prices in Slovenia, but that is what I would reckon, to be honest. But um, yeah, in terms of how this beer goes together, it's kind of pretty much what you would expect. So you, you can see the head has faded away to just be a very thin foamy layer, but uh, around the edge of the glass, it's got a little bit more of a kind of thicker foamy ring, which I really enjoy. But yeah, nice thin kind of foamy layer on the top there, and a thicker ring around the edge of the glass. Incidentally, the colour of the head, I would say, it's not perfect white, but it's quite um, kind of creamy, I would say, a nice kind of cream colour. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look pretty nice, in fact. So um, yeah, I think um, this one is kind of what you'd expect. Colour-wise, I'd say that this beer is a kind of medium amber. And remember, the colour of your beer depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. Um, two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But yeah, it's usually the colour of malt, or the type of malt, sorry, that determines the magnitude of the colour of your beer, the ECB rating. Um, and yeah, this one, for a Belgian strong gold nail, the colour of this one is not really out of the ordinary, but I would guess that it's maybe got a few more brown sugary orientated malts in it, or it's had a slightly longer wort boil. The thing you have to remember with Belgian style beers um, is that Quite often what they do with these to put the alcohol percentage up is they'll put some kind of brew sugar into them. And that's why you still have a relatively light mouthfeel for the alcohol percentage relative to, you know, some of these American beers that you'll drink. The American ones always feel, or the American style ones, I should say, always feel a little bit thicker 
than the than these ones and these ones are always a bit lighter and kind of more crisp it's just because they add brew sugar to fire up the alcohol percentage rather than using the extracts from the malt but um yeah that as we say is worth remembering but uh, yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. You can see it's got quite a little bit of a natural kind of hazy character to it. But um, yeah, I like how it um, how it goes about its business. So yeah, very nice stuff. But um, yeah, we need to see how we get on with this then. So that's everything we really need to say about the appearance. I think it's about time that we look at the aroma for this one. Let's go for it. Mmm, that does actually smell quite nice. It's got a little bit of that kind of rawness to it as well. I love it when you get beers from these very small breweries because, you know, they don't come across as overly refined. They've still got a little bit of this, that raw home brewing edge to them. And you get that with this one. It's got a little bit of that kind of fluffy, yeasty, bready kind of thing going on. So I do like how this beer goes about its business in that sense. So it's actually got a good little bit of sweetness in there. You've got a lot of doughy breadiness, a lot of kind of kind of sweetness and things like that in this beer as well so i think this one's going to be very interesting to try actually mm, yeah but let's try and break down the aroma a little bit then and just see how we go but my first impression of this one is that it's going to be in terms of the, the what exact kind of beer it is this one is going to be like a very strong um belgian blonde ale so um yeah it's just giving the impression of being you know quite light and easy going rather than being sort of big and bold if that makes sense compared to like the triples and stuff but um, I think I'm going to like this one. We'll need to see. But yeah, aroma-wise then. So the backbone of this beer for me, you can smell that there's a little bit of an almost slightly woody, crackery type thing. That, to me, forms the backbone of the beer. But on top of that, you can smell the kind of bready, yeasty qualities in there. There's a lovely sort of almost very slightly wholemealy, brown bready sort of thing. But I'd say that that's kind of surpassed a little bit by the more white bready elements that the beer has. So, um, yeah, the... The aroma that comes out of this one, I think, is um, is very, very nice, for sure. So, the um, I think, yeah, as I say, woody, sort of crackery backbone, a sort of brown bready kind of note on top of that, then a smoother white bread, and then beyond that, you've got a lovely kind of brown sugary element to this one. And it's quite interesting, because I think you get a little bit of a kind of Werther's Original butter candy, butterscotchy type thing out of this. You do get quite a bit of honey character as well, and maybe a straight up caramel. So yeah, it almost, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Maris Otter malt from England. The aromas that you get out of the malt base in this beer really are a little bit like sort of English malt, just that kind of brown bready note. So I don't know if they are likely to, I don't think they're likely to use Maris Otter malt, to be quite honest with you, just because of where the brewery are. They're probably likely to get their malts from Austria or um, or Germany, or there will, I'm sure there will be some Slovenian producers as well, but on what scale, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, the aroma of this one, it really does remind me of English Maris Otter malt. Um, it's got that little bit of brown breadiness, it's got that the kind of white bready note to go with it. Some McVitie's digestive biscuit quality in there. Some Werther's Original type things. A little bit of a kind of sweet honey and a wee bit of a kind of more concentrated caramel. So I do like how this beer goes about its business. I'll say that for sure. This one has got, pardon me, a very very nice, um, a very nice. Uh, kind of malty and yeasty backbone to it instantly at the back of the nose you can smell a little bit of a more kind of thicker yeasty kind of element to this one and it's almost got a little bit of a very slightly it's not quite clovey and it's not quite coriander but there's there is a little bit of a sort of grainy spice to this one that i can't quite put my finger on but yeah some woody and uh, slightly spicy notes pushing their way out of this beer the further you go into the aftertaste and not into the aftertaste the further you go into the aroma with it but yeah malty and yeasty wise this one i think goes together very very nicely on the hoppy side of things again it's kind of what you'd expect you get a little bit of smooth earthiness out of it you've got quite a nice bright floral aromaticity and uh, you've also got a little bit of a kind of brighter grassy note in there to me it smells like it's probably using some kind of local hop variety because it's got that nice um like kind of just you know almost his out when everyone always thinks when you say noble hops you're talking only about germany but no you're talking about the czech sats the slovenian styrian goldings the German Hallertown Tetanagers and of course the Polish have got things like the Lubelski and stuff. The Austrians have got the hops from the Mulevirtal and um, 
things like this. So there's quite a few hops that fit into this noble category. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is a local variety that's in this, maybe like a you know Styrian Golding or Dana or something like this. Um, and it's the smoothness, I think, of the green component that always gives the Slovenian hops away. They've got various things down there now. You've got the Styrian Dragon and the Styrian Wolf and stuff like this. The Styrian, Drag uh, Styrian Wolf is a beautiful hop and stand with its melony flavours. But I think this one's using something, one of the kind of more old school Slovenian hops like Styrian Goldings. Or something like that because it's got a lovely smooth grassiness to it and a lovely kind of bright but still quite smooth floral aromatic component to it so yeah I'd be curious to know what hop it is that they are they are actually using in this one but um yeah strikes me as being quite nice whatever it is uh, on the fruity side of things um, it's kind of what you'd expect as well. For me, there's a good little bit of a sort of sultana-like quality to this one, you know, dried white green grapes. There's maybe a wee bit of an apricot in there. Um, you got a little bit of a kind of oily, peary character to it. And, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps a little bit of a, say, mm, you know, perhaps a little bit of a kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? My brain's not working. A little bit of a, um, you know, a little bit of a very slightly gooseberry note. I get just a little touch of gooseberry out of this one, come to think of it. So that is definitely quite interesting as well. So, yeah, I think this um, the aroma of this beer is pretty interesting. So take a little bit of time to ponder that over before you get stuck into it. But I think it is about time for us to taste this one now. So this one is the Erna. Coming in at 8.4% ABV, a Belgian strong golden ale, if I've got that in the right order, from uh, Pivovar Navarro, the Guardian Brewery in uh, Osp near Koper in the southwest of Slovenia. Uh, let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skoll, cheers, obviously say down there, Nazdravia. Let's go. Yeah. That is pretty solid actually. That is very nice. First impression of this one is it's almost, you know, this beer is almost a little bit like a... Uh, it's almost as if... Um, I, I reviewed a beer de gar uh, yesterday. But this beer is almost like if you take the idea of... Um, this one is almost like if you take the idea of like a Belgian triple. Take the alcohol content down and then put a little bit of the sort of farmhousey, bready beer de gar kind of thing into it. That's what this beer is like. It's almost like a hybrid of a triple and uh, a French beer de gare. So that's interesting. Uh, the other perspective you could take at it is that it's almost, it's like a very, if you think of it just as a Belgian blonde, it's like a more, it's like a higher alcohol, but very bready and yeasty Belgian blonde. I think that's another way you can look at this one. Um, but whatever it is, I think this is quite nice. Uh, and it still has, as I was picking up in the aroma, it really still has a little bit of that home-brewed rawness to it. And I like that when you review beers from the very, very small breweries. It just gives the, the beer a little bit of charm, you know? So, yeah. It's an interesting point to make about this one. So, yeah, the... The way that this beer goes together, I think, is just very, very nice. Really solid, actually. So, um, yeah, I think it goes about its business uh, really rather nicely. So a big thumbs up to um, to Pivar Navarro for this one. Um, but let's try and break the flavour down for you and just describe it a wee bit more succinctly. Um, But I will say that this is one of these beers where it almost tastes exactly as you would expect from the aroma. The, the aroma really translate, transcribes, translates into the flavour, transpires in the flavour. I don't know. English is getting terrible these days. But yeah, the, the what you expect from the aroma really is what you get in the flavour with this beer. So let's break it down. Middle third and back third of your palate. The baseline of that beer you can get a nice little smooth kind of crackery element out of it. There are a few elements of kind of woody character in there as well but that woody sort of Jacob's cream crackery sort of thing that is the backbone of this uh, this beer in the middle third and the back third of your palate. On top of that you can feel there is a little bit of a kind of brown bready kind of grainy bready sort of thing in there and it's almost a little bit like English malt. As I say it reminds me of Maris Otter malt from England. You get a bit of that but on top of that you get a slightly brighter white bread 
And I think, you know, those four kind of elements, they spread right from the middle third of your palate to the back third of your palate, and then it varies a little bit beyond that. So let's focus on the middle third of your palate then. So either end of that middle third of your palate, you get a slightly stronger bread crusty note there. You can feel that building up. But then on top of the kind of white bready layer, uh, and uh, on top of the white bready layer in that middle third of your palate, you can feel the nice kind of, um, you know, you feel the, the kind of more brown sugary elements coming out of this beer. So it's almost like you've got a kind of light layer of honey forming a big circle in that middle third of your palate. So you've got a light layer of honey there. And within that honey, you've got a little bit of a kind of uh, McVitie's Digestive Biscuit sort of thing. I'm never sure how good a reference that is for Slovenians, but McVitie's Digestive Biscuits, these kind of grainy but slightly sweet. Uh, biscuits that we have back home in the motherland of Scotland. You get them here in Sweden too, but um, it's certainly got a little bit of that just kind of biscuity um, flavour to it, which I really like. So, yeah. Um, so you get that, but then when you go right into the middle of your palate with this one, you, get, you can feel the honey flavours just sort of concentrate around the dead centre of your palate, but there is a, a little bit of a straight up caramel right in the middle of your tongue there. And this is what I was saying, you know, it does have the, the beer, you can feel the booziness in this one, but it's quite light and easy going, to be honest with you, in a lot of ways. I do like how this beer goes about its business, for sure. Um, but the malty side of things in the middle third of your palate is is kind of um, really nice. So yeah, you, I think underneath that epicenter of the palate as well, you do get a little bit of a kind of Werther's original sort of butter candy type thing coming out of the beer. So yeah, I can certainly appreciate how how this beer goes uh, goes about its business for sure. Um, yeah, flavour profile this one is... Um, it's pretty damn nice actually. So it gets a thumbs up. Um, it gets a thumbs up from me. Um, yeah. I really I do like this and I have to admit I would be quite curious to try something if if they're kind of more blonde beers are like this, it'd be cool to try something from the darker end of the spectrum as well. So I think in the next Navor box I might ask him to get me one of the darker beers. Uh, actually, that would be quite cool. But uh, yeah, I think that covers the middle third of the palette quite well. But the only other thing we could say about the middle third of your palate is that as we go towards the kind of front half of it, you get a little bit of a more kind of woody character to it. But let's focus on the back third of your palate then. So the border region between middle and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready buildup in there, a wee bit of a graininess. And then uh, behind that, you can feel there's a nice little bit of a bigger, um, there is a little bit of a kind of bigger yeasty kind of quality to the, um, to the beer as well. So... How do we say? Um, hmm. Yeah, on top, you know, on top, as I say, on top of that, that those four layers that we talk about, you just get a more airy kind of brown bready sort of thing, and there's one or two little, almost slightly spicy elements in there as well. Um, but yeah, you can feel that as you start from the, on, with, with the yeasty note, on the back third of your palate, you can feel that as you start from the back of your palate, the flavour just condenses down a little bit, and as you go into the middle third of your palate, the flavours are just a little bit more squashed together pardon me, and condensed, and I think that works really well, but this is quite a common thing you get in uh, in a lot of different beers. But on the, um, on the, on the, the kind of hoppy side of things then, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of, um, in, in the back of the in the back corners of the palate, you've certainly got a nice little bit of an earthy smoothness to this one. It gets a little bit herbal as you move further forward, but as you kind of push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, it's got a nice kind of smooth but still quite bright floral aromaticity to it. And again, I do suspect that this is a local variety of hop that's in this one. It might be something else. You know, there might be a little bit of something else in there as well. But I do suspect this could be, you know, a little bit of Styrian Goldings or Dana or something like this. There's just Something the smoothness you get out of this, the, the green component for me would indicate Slovenian hops. So that's another quirkiness to this one. You're getting uh um you're getting a Belgian style beer with Slovenian hops in it. And the Slovenians do some great hops in St. The Savinia Valley, Green Gold Brewing in Slovenia, you know. That's a big hop farm. The Roynik hop farm that uh 
brew beers with some of their own hops. I think that's pretty awesome. They produce a lot of Styrian Wolf and Dragon and stuff like this, so check out some of those green gold beers for sure. Particularly the IPAs, because they're the ones that will use the local uh, varieties. But um, yeah, the the, um, the the green component of this one is really nice. And round the front curve of the palate, it's got a nice smooth grassy character to it, but you just get a little touch of, uh, of zestiness out of it, which I think is, um, is very, very nice. So on that note, um, it gets a thumbs up from me once again. So, on the um, on the, um, I think that covers everything we need to say about the green component. Like I say, just quite smooth. But I think the further you go into the aftertaste, you get a little bit more zestiness on the front tip of the tongue and a little bit more in a floral aromaticity. So I do like that. But let's focus on that front third of your palate. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up in there. A wee bit of a bread crusty note. Then the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit of a kind of bread crusty element, a bit of a smooth white bready sort of thing in there. Then on top of that, you've got that nice oily bubble where those um, juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. Um, so I do like how that... Um, I do like how that goes together uh, in this one for sure, and it's the the fruity flavours are quite similar to what we picked up in the uh, aroma as well. So let's just go through those. So if you go to that back, the back half of that front third of your tongue, you get a nice little bit of a kind of dried fruity character to it, a little bit of breadiness underneath. But yeah, you can feel some of those kind of sultana-like qualities. You know, the dried white green grapes. You get a little bit of that. There is a wee tiny touch of a very dried apricot in this one, but I'd say that takes a back seat to other things. Uh, as you move further forward, there's a little bit of a kind of oily pear. A little bit of an almost gooseberry note in the front half of that front third of your tongue, but then you also get a little bit of a kind of you also get a little bit of a a sort of zestiness um, out of this beer. You certainly almost get a little bit of a kind of um, or, well, I think it's almost like a spicy apple, a little bit of a kind of lemony zestiness just behind the front tip of the tongue, and that's when the fruits start to interact with the kind of grassy esters. Uh, from the hops as well so yeah there's a few interesting things going on in this beer but like i said i think this beer is very much like a it's almost like a triple beer de gar hybrid or you could think of it as a very uh you could think of it as a kind of strong uh, belgian blonde with a little bit more of a kind of brady you know big brady yeasty component to it i think that's a good way to think of this one but it's a very easy going beer and i like this one it's kind of dangerously drinkable for an 8.5 percenter as well actually but it certainly gets a uh, gets a thumbs up from me i wouldn't hesitate to drink that again and it makes me curious to try something that's a little bit more brown sugary orientated as well but uh, yeah if this is what these guys are doing in their very early stages then i think they've got a, a fairly bright future ahead of them let's just say that so yeah let's um have a look at the, the, the mouthfeel then just to round off. So mouthfeel wise, this one is um it's kind of top end of mid bodied, bottom end of full bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth in this one. It's got a bit of an oily slickness to it as well, I would say. Yeah, quite an oily and slick beer this one. Above everything else. So I can certainly appreciate that about it, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's a lovely beer that's smooth but still oily and slick and it feels quite clean as well. Um, but yeah, on the hoppy side of things, I think it's quite a low, um, I think it's quite a low bitterness beer this one. I think you're probably talking about 20 IBUs or something like that, not a lot of bitterness to this one at all. But this is quite common for the, the Belgian beers, they've just got a little bit of bitterness to them. And the hoppy character of the beer is quite smooth as well as we've said. But the malt base, like we say, a little bit kind of, a few slightly drier elements underneath and a bit of smoothness and graininess in there. And a bit of sweetness sitting on top and that's where the oily character comes from. But then the fruity side of the beer also adds a nice big kind of oily element to it as well. So it gets a thumbs up from me. In, uh, in that particular regard too but um yeah i do like how how this beer goes about its business that's for sure and i think that um they have done a very very nice job with it so a big thumbs up to pivovarna varu for how this beer has turned out so yeah i'm happy with that 
I think we can uh, round off this review there. Certainly be very curious to try a few of their other ones. So thank you again to Davor for making this one possible. I hope that you guys enjoyed my take on this beer. This one turned out to be very, very nice. So let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from people of Arnavaru as well. And hopefully we can return to these guys quite soon. This one was the Erna, an 8.4% Belgian strong gold nail, if we're given it the right style terminology, uh, from people of Arnavaru in uh, Osp near Koper in the southwest of Slovenia. But let's leave it there. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out their social media, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Slanja, Skull, cheers, and Nazdravia.